Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about soil organic matter decomposition. So let's get started. So before moving on its definition and what it is type of, let's just talk about the composition of soil organic matter. So these contain a lot of things. So we'll talk about each one of them. So starting with that, so it contains certain animals, which are mainly earthworms, centipedes, ants, and plant residues. Also, it contains complex carbohydrates, which are mainly cellulose, hemicellulose, starch, pectins, tannins, lignins. Also, it has simple sugars, proteins, fats, oils, vaccine, raisins, mucilage, and alcohols, aldehydes, ketones. With that, it also contains inorganic residues and microbial mass. So this is in all the composition of the entire soil organic matter. So moving on with this. So the soil organic matter is basically divided into three types. So the types are biomass, detritus and humus. So biomass is the living organisms, whereas detritus is the dead tissues and wastes and the humus is the non-living and the non-tissue part. So more this. So let us talk about the role of SOM or soil organic matter. So as you can see, there are certain layers of a soil that is present and O is the topmost layer and C is the deepest layer of the soil. So these are reservoirs of nutrients in the form of humus that promote plant growth. These are food source for soil organisms. These increase water holding capacity as well. These contribute to the formation of soil cores structure that lowers its erosion. Also it promotes soil aeration cation exchange capacity and helps in maintaining soil pH. So this is the subdivision of all the layers. So O is the organic horizon on the surface or this is the topmost layer. Next is the surface horizon. So this is the surface horizon. Next is the subsoil horizon. And this is the lower the deepest layer is the substratum. And it also increases bioavailability of dissolved minerals. So these are some of the important rules of SOM with this. So let's just talk about some of the factors that affect soil organic matter. So number one is the climate. So the temperature and rainfall influences the amount of nitrogen and organic matters that is present in the soil. So talking about the climate, we just discuss about the two terms that we just talked about, which is temperature and rainfall. So talking about temperature, so, the, uh, so they have cold periods in which it retards the plant growth and organic matter decomposition. So lower temperature, which is equivalent to higher soil organic matter. Also cold period retards the plant growth. And for each 10 degree Celsius decline in mean annual temperature, the total organic matter and nitrogen increases by two to three times. So whereas the plant growth retards or slow, uh, slows down the organic matter and the nitrogen content increases by two to three times. So next factor, which is the temp uh, rainfall under climate. So it increases SOM as nitrogen and organic matter increase as the effective moisture becomes greater. All right. So as the rainfall increases, the SOM or the soil organic matter and the nitrogen content also increases. So talking about some of the more factors that we have here is the natural vegetation, which positively influences SOM. Also talking about texture. So texture is something in which fine texture soils are generally higher in organic matter than coarse texture soils. So fine texture soils are given preference for having higher organic matter. Next is drainage. So high moisture content and poorly drained soils are much higher in organic matter and nitrogen. So having high moisture content or with soils which are not properly drained generally have high organic matter and nitrogen content. Next is cropping and tillage. So the crop lands have much, uh, much low nitrogen and organic matter than comparable with virgin soils. Also modern conservation tillage practices helps to maintain high OM levels. So the crop lands generally have low organic matter than the virgin soils which are not been cultivated. So moving on with this. So next is crop rotation that affects the SOM. 
So the crop rotation of cereals and legumes results in higher soil organic matter. So this is another factor that helps in the soil organic matter. So moving on with so talking about the decomposition of SOM. So the decomposition results in release of carbon dioxide as well as water. Also it releases uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur and other elements as inorganic ions. Also some of these ions reincorporated into organic immobilization and these microbe mediated mineralization which increase bioavailability of inorganic nutrients to the plants which can be further absorbed. So these are some of the uh, results that we get through decomposition of SOM. So basically these results in release of inorganic ions as well as carbon dioxide and water. So these are the some of the consequences that we see here through decomposition of SOM. So next is next is the components of SOM. So it consists of majorly two groups of compounds. So one is the humic matter. So humic matter is the brown, black colored hum, uh, humidified, or uh, humidified residues of plants and animals. And these are these can be alkali or acid soluble component of soil organic matter. And these mix to about 60 to 80 percent of soil organic matter. And these are composed of complex aromatic compounds which can be mainly polyph polyphenols or polyphenols. Also, these are resistant to microbial degradation, biodegradation, and these are most active part of humus. Also, based on their solubility, they can be classified into pulvic acid, which has the lowest molecular weight, alkali and acid, and there are certain more acids. So basically, humor, humic matter, which is basically humus, or humic matter is the most active part of humus, uh, which is which has the most high highest percentage of SOM in it and which is very useful for cultivation. Also, let's just talk about some of some of the acids that are present in it, which are classified as pulvic acid, which has the lowest molecular weight, alkali and acid solubility. Also, next we have humic acid, which has which has medium molecular, uh, molecular weight, alkali soluble and acid insoluble. And last one is the human, which has the highest molecular weight, usually insoluble in both alkali and acid, except under most drastic conditions. Example as lignocellulosic biomass. So these are the three components of humic. All right, so humic, we have pulvic acid, humic acid, and human. So depending on the color, as you can see in this picture, these are classified further, and also on the solubility. So moving on with so talking about the non-humic matter. So as we just talked about, there are two major components of SOM, which is one is the humic matter and another is the non-humic matter. So non-humic matter are the residues of plants and animals as well. Also, these are alkaline acid, insoluble component of S, uh, SOM. So these are absolutely insoluble and these make to about 20 to 30 percent of the soil organic matter. So these are the remaining percentage after humic matter. Also, these are composed of certain organic compounds like polysaccharides, proteins, fats, poly polymer like lignans, polyuronides, waxes, resins and tannins, which are of low molecular weight. So these are some of the important components of soil organic matter. So talking about the decomposition of humus, so bit, I'll just, so talking about humus, so humus is a complex mixture of dark organic matter, which is amorphous and colloidal in nature that forms the soil when organic residues of plants and animals undergo decomposition by soil microbes. So humus is one of the component of SOM. So let's just keep this video till here. I'll be discussing more about this in my next video. So stay tuned and thank you for watching this video. Thank you.